Hello, my friends. Welcome to Keswick Chapel of the Chew. I'm Pastor Robert. This is day five of week 10. We've been looking at compassion all week long. I want to encourage you to grab your Bible and pen and paper so that you can turn to Luke chapter 10. Our passage is verses 25 through 37 as we look at the parable of the Good Samaritan. We're going to read this passage again together one final time on the Chew this week so that we can say that we've read it at least twice. I hope you've read it several times because we want to really get this passage into us so that we understand clearly what Jesus was driving home for us, what he's inviting us to. So as we read together, we'll remember our two theological affirmations. The first was that the way of Jesus is the way of compassion. And the second is that the way of Jesus is the way of a neighbor. And then the third point from Pastor Short's message was this, how do we respond? And so we're going to cover these things today. So as we read, I hope you're ready, Luke chapter 10, verses 25 through 37. On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law, Jesus replied, how do you read it? He answered, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind. And love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus replied, You have answered correctly. Do this and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself, so he asked Jesus, And who is my neighbor? In reply, Jesus said, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he fell into the hands of robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road. When he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So to a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came to where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his donkey and took him to an inn and took care of him. The next day he took out two silver coins and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robber? The expert of the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. Jesus told him, go and do likewise. This, my friends, is the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Will you say, thanks be unto God. Well, as we look at this, I, I found it interesting as I looked at this again, that the expert in the law starts out asking for himself, not for others, not for anyone else around him, but for himself, how he could secure eternal life. So it's it's a very selfish uh, you know approach that this man is taking. And so when Jesus concurs with his response about what the law actually says, he was trying to justify himself and he said, "Well, who is my neighbor?" right? He was just being, you know, he's just looking for an out. And so Jesus responds by telling this parable about the Good Samaritan. And we talked about how the Samaritans were despised because they were half Jew. They weren't full Jew, so they were despised and they weren't considered fit by those who were pure blood, pure born. So this is interesting that Jesus used him as the hero of the story, isn't it? It was basically an affront to the priest, to the Levite, and to this expert in the law. So Jesus did it for a purpose, and the purpose was because only this good Samaritan showed compassion and took action for this man who was left dead. Now, I find it interesting that Jesus doesn't tell us what background, culture, or heritage the man who was robbed came from. He just says that a man fell among the robbers, right? So we don't know who he was, where he came from, but we know about the priest, the Levite, and the Good Samaritan. And so Jesus is using this to prove that the godly thing to do is to have compassion and to take action and to see everyone as a neighbor. So we asked some questions yesterday. I'll give those to you real quickly. You know, how can we respond 
we talked about through prayer and repentance. If we've not been acting with compassion, we need to repent of that and pray and ask the Lord to help us take action. We need to realize that social media is not social engagement. It doesn't replace face-to-face. Do we ask questions or do we argue? Do we listen or lecture? Do we understand, again, that compassion requires action? Do we realize that regardless of background, ethnicity, or class, whether you're poor or you're rich or somewhere in the middle, do we realize that each and every one of us are created in God's image with a plan and a purpose for our lives and that God doesn't want us to be divided because of our background, our cultural background, our ethnicity, or our class. We are one people. So we come to this and to the end of it, and I want to ask you this question. The title of today's chew is Compassion Decision. What is your decision about compassion? Which way will you choose, my friend? Will you choose the way of Jesus, or will you choose your own way? I pray that you'll have eyes to see and ears to hear as you continue to chew on this word, that you'll have a receptive heart and mind to God's truth, and that you will be transformed by the renewing of your mind. I pray that you'll go in the peace of God today. Blessings to you, my friends. Bye for now.